Well, I'm not sure that all Americans believe all of the things that you just said, but I do certainly think that um, the emphasis on competition to the exclusion of the need for cooperation, and I emphasize that latter part, to the exclusion of cooperation, I think it's based upon what I said earlier. It's based upon a certain level of insecurity and a certain level of uncertainty about the future, about China's future behavior, and about the future position of the United States in the world and in Asia. So I think that competition is fed by the, those kinds of factors. It's also, I think, reflective of a kind of evangelical impulse in the United States involving democracy promotion. Uh, the United States has always had an element of, well, I shouldn't say always had, but for a long time, the United States has had an element of democracy promotion, especially since the Second World War and the advent of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. And I think in many cases that that evangelical impulse has taken the United States down some very torturous and very self-defeating paths. It has not served American interests in, in, in many respects. It just simply exacerbates the animosity and the rivalry between the United States and China and undermines their ability to work in areas that are absolutely essential for both countries. So I don't think on balance, particularly as it's applied to China today, that it serves a lot of positive functions. From a broad perspective, I would say that it indicates to me that the US military continues to fail to come to grips with the reality of a world in which the US will no longer be the clearly predominant military power on the planet, and especially not in the Asia Pacific. Um, the US military and the US civilian leadership need to develop a realistic strategy that can strengthen uh, the foundations for a stable balance of power in Asia between the US and its friends and allies and China. Neither the US nor China will dominate that critical region. Both of them must recognize this and work with others in the region and elsewhere to create understandings and create confidence building measures that reduce the chance of crises occurring over Taiwan or maritime disputes and to avoid the kind of political rhetoric on both sides that dominates the discourse. I think that the assumption that the Chinese are dedicated as a first priority and as a deliberate strategy to push the United States out of Asia is definitely an over an exaggeration. I think there's no clear evidence that that in fact is the case. I think that, and, and, and part of the reason for that is simply that it's hard to conceive exactly how China is going to push the United States out of Asia. The United States has critical allies in Asia. It has a strong economic, political, and military presence in Asia that isn't going to go away. And I don't see how the Chinese can acquire a level of capability that would actually force the United States to withdraw from the region short of war. And even in a wartime situation, I don't think that's going to be the consequence. So I think the challenge for the for the United States is not to fight against the China that's trying to push it out of the region. I think the challenge is to establish a regional environment in which both the United States and China can prosper in the region, in which neither side is dedicated to pushing the other back or out of the region, and in which both have to recognize that they have to make certain kinds of accommodations and certain kinds of adjustments to each other in ways that will not uh, weaken each side to an excessive degree in ways that will not look like appeasement and will feed uh, the assertiveness of some in either camp. There has to be a basis for understanding between the two countries on limits, limits to their level of competition and limits to their level of assertiveness in a variety of ways, while also strengthening their, their understanding with each other. So no, I don't believe that China is committed to ejecting the U.S. from the region as a deliberate policy. And I don't think, frankly, that China requires such a thing to in order, in order to attain its national interests. Unless, of course, the United States itself 
regards China as an implacable enemy, and it seeks to contain and push back and undermine and weaken China at every turn, under that kind of a highly antagonistic relationship, and I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, then I could see the Chinese deciding that they need to try to push the U.S. out of the region. But even then, it's going to be an impossible task, I think. And it would only set up the two countries for conflict. So focusing on this idea that China is dedicated to pushing the U.S. out of the region, I think just distracts people from the real nature of the problem that the two countries face and it undermines the ability of people to deal with those problems effectively. Well, yes, I think there's definitely a very strong role for other countries to play. Um, I think they have a major role in encouraging both the U.S. and China to resist demonizing and to work from facts. U.S. allies need to speak up more on this on this uh, issue. They need to resist American pressure to dictate how they should respond to China. And countries to need, need to agree on moving to revise and expand the World Trade Organization and to also, I think, encounter, um, in, encourage involvement in the Trans-Pacific Partnership and try to also revise that in some ways that more adequately adjust to and, and account for technology and investment questions and develop more significant mechanisms for cooperation on critical issues. I think other countries can play a major role in trying to push those agendas and trying to get the United States and China both to back away from this zero-sum, worst-case demonizing that's currently going on, especially on the U.S. side. So I think they do play a critical role. I think the most key U.S. allies, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Japan, South Korea and others, they all need to speak up more privately, if not publicly, with the United States to ask, where are you going with all this? What is the ultimate objective of this effort? Because if it's to overturn the Chinese government or if it's to contain China in a major way or to get the rest of the world to buy into a very zero sum set of policies, it's not going to work. Countries are not going to buy into that kind of a strategy for the United States. I don't think, as I said before, a Biden administration is gonna push that kind of a strategy and try and push it on allies. But I think the Trump administration has clearly attempted to do this. And I think, as I say, other countries need to really push back against it. While of course also stating clearly that they do agree with some of the criticisms that the Trump administration has made in some areas of China's behavior. That is true, but as with so many of these issues, you can't just go from that to this kind of categorical across the board condemnation that in fact the Trump administration ends up with in its approach to dealing with China. And there I think foreign countries again can play a major role in resisting that, that categorical uh, over the top assessment and arguing for a much more balanced and a much more sophisticated strategy and greater coordination in dealing with China.